What's going on, everybody? Long night, long time no see. But now we back on the come up with Josh Coleman. It's the first episode back. And today, I got a very special guest, man, for the first episode back, man. My my boy, my brother, my steez. <laughs> Skilla Scorn! From What's Decatur. Up, guys? From Decatur. Oh, yeah. My boy, Norman Thomas. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Good. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? Now, you the first episode back for the pod, man. The pod been gone for almost two years now. Yeah. And you know, like I was saying, like in the in the preview, the last time I did this pod, like I was eighteen. You know, I wasn't even in college yet. I was like about to graduate high school, and I just stopped. Yeah. And so now that we're bringing the pod back, man, I got a a viral digital creator, man, a great photographer, um, influencer, my boy. I got I got you on the show, and now. You know, we 19, 20, and we got more stories to tell, you know, you know, a lot of personal stories, a lot of fun, exciting stories to tell. But we're also further along in our craft of what we do. So I just felt like, you know, why not bring why not bring my boy here as, as the first guest? So before we dive into it, man, let's just tell let's just tell everybody about how me and you met, man. Like how how this just all came about, man. Cause if y'all know us, y'all always like Josh and Norm are always doing something. Like, like what are they always doing? Whether we having a party at the house, <laughs> the we, legends, the dude. legends den. Whether we at the legends den, um, you know. So just now tell tell everybody your story or just your version about like how we how we locked in. All right. So my first time meeting him was what well, it was moving day, wasn't it? Yeah, moving day to Morehouse. We both go to Morehouse. So, so I both for which our story, man. I'm in Atlanta now. I go to Morehouse College. We Morehouse. Morehouse Tigers, man. We go to Morehouse, so uh, we HBCU kids. So this is also catered to the HBCU crowd. So just tell everybody, yeah. So we we met at Move In Day. Well, really, we had locked in before. We had what, like had through we, IG or something, like when they announced like who your roommate was gonna be. Well, we tapped in on IG and yeah. stuff. Well, I think we had called each other like once or twice just to chop it up on some. Sh- oh, we had DM'd each other. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah, and then we was randomly we were randomly aside roommates, so we moved in what Grace Hall. And we had the biggest room on our floor. Yeah, we did. I knew I knew as soon as I saw that we was gonna be turned. Oh god, it was both lit. <laughs> like both our families there, we was lit. Nah, but it was like really a lot of people have like bad roommate experiences. So like when we got paired together and like that first day I already knew like, bro, bro, lit. Like we already yeah. know like this this is not gonna be a bad roommate experience. And so like that day, like ever since did we did we go out that night? Or no, it was the next night. We were that NSO week, we were out like a lot. Bro. You were out, but it was that one night, it was the night they was like don't go out. And we had went oh, out to we look. snuck out. Yeah, we had like, a little curfew. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody was following that curfew. We had the curfew and they was like, don't go out. And that was like our first night we had went out. Because I remember it was like me, you, and then that's when I met like TT. Am I getting Yeah, and I had to, it was at Morris Brown. Yeah, it? It, was, yeah, it was the oh, Morris Brown. That. <laughs> hey, that block party was ghetto. It got shot up and everything. <laughs> that was a good welcome to a college experience. But I think, yeah, that was like, that was a day where I was like, yeah, like, bro, like, we're going to have a good time. Like. We gonna have a good time, like really vibing out, bro. And we've been a dynamic duo since, like, bro. Steez, <laughs> let's talk, bro. That's why I'm like, bro. This like you just had to be the first guest because it's like if y'all know me or like y'all see me around, like y'all always know like it'd be me and him, like always doing something, like whether we having like a party or like we just kicking it or like we just like we just be on Instagram, like we just be out yeah, doing shit, like bro. It just be random, like they be like, where y'all at? We finna pull up, like wherever we are, bro. Like you already know, like it's rolling. Like we could just be at the house, and be like come through, like it's, it's just viral. But it was like, um, ever since I just met bro, like he just been like somebody who always got motion, super talented, man. People like, you know, he attract good vibes. He just, he just the guy, like he's a Steve. So it was like, why not bring him on as my first guest? And so, man, you know, just to get into it first, before we get into, you know, like what led you to like wanting to be a dope photographer and digital creator and all that stuff. Like, just talk about like, you know, like how you grew up in your early life. Like, you know, like I said, you're from Decatur, but just like give everybody, you know, just a little insight what it was like growing up, you know? Yeah. All right, so uh, I was born in Decatur. I stayed there for about maybe like three, four years. Then I moved out to Conyers. Uh, I was always like active in like church and stuff. I went to church. My dad's a pastor, so shout out Big North. <laughs> big shout North. out Big North. Uh, so we were always like in church doing stuff like that. Um, I went to Heritage High School. Go Patriots. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I ain't really like I ain't like my high school like that. Bro. Why? It just wasn't it, bro. Like you, what made it not like not it? Well, it's because it wasn't Woodward. Like I wanted to go to private school, bro. 
Heritage Public School? Yes. It was ghetto? I got some stories. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you go to Heritage, but like, what made you like not enjoy high school? Because I know like we talked about it before and like just how like your transition from high school to college was like a big transition for you. Yeah. But like, just talk about like, tell everybody like what you were like in high school because people I would not imagine <laughs> what you were like in high school. Bro, high school, I was like, like five, two. <laughs> Bro, I was like, I was like five, two, 110 pounds with a big nugget head. <laughs> like my, my head looked like a loaf of bread. <laughs> Like, I was like, if you seen a kid, you was like, oh, yeah, we got to bully that nigga. So you were getting bullied? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nah, I ain't get bullied. Well, no, nah, I did. Like, you got pushed in the locker and stuff? <laughs> 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 bro, I'm being for real, bro. Yeah, I did, bro. Damn. In high school? Well, nah, not like, like not, all right, not like no, like, crazy bullying, like. Like, like, they used to be roasting like, you. Yeah. But that's what we did. But I ain't going to lie. Basketball, when I play basketball, yeah, they used to do that. <laughs> like, they, they used to put you in the locker? Yeah, bro. That's some, like, Disney The seniors would put the freshmen in lockers. Bro, that's so Disney Channel. Like, that did. <laughs> oh, why are you putting me <laughs> like, in the locker? Like, trying to dump us in trash cans and stuff. Like, all that. Damn, you was getting hazed in the high school basketball team. I used to think that shit was so funny, too. <laughs> I didn't think too much of it, but I was a loser. Nah, bro. So like <laughs> So okay Alright so that, the, the transition From high school to college Like Why was that like Such a like Pivotal transition for you Like You from here anyway So you could really talk about Like what led to the decision Really for like You wanted to go to Morehouse In the first place But like and Just then, that transition Yeah That transition I feel like One Like going from high school To college It was just like A new phase for me Cause like I would say, like, my junior and senior year, like, I mean, yeah, my junior and senior year going, like, into those years, like, I was finding myself. Mm. So, like, like through that journey and stuff, like, when I was learning myself, learning new things, I realized, like, I could have, like, a whole new identity at college. Very true. Even still being from, like, Georgia, though, like, you know, like, yeah. you probably came to college with, like, people that was, like, I know him. Surprisingly, it's barely, it's not a lot of people that I know that go to Morehouse. Really? I swear. Not enough to know, like, who I was. Like, they probably knew of like me. Like, knew of you? Like, they socials. didn't know who I was. Yeah. I was low-key, bro. Like, I I did not like, I was ducked off. I so, this like is like, people. so this is like your breakthrough. Like, yeah. coming to college, like your breakthrough. Because, like, now you, like, having parties. Like, everybody know you and shit. That's how, I ain't gonna say that's how it was for me. But, like, I always knew, like, like, high school for me was, like, it was different. Like, I'm still doing, like, the same shit I be doing now. But it's, like, it was just more... L.A. is, like, really small. Like, yeah. it's big, but it's small. Like, everybody, like, if you're from the inner city, like, you either know them, know of them, got a cousin related to them, baby mama, baby daddy. Like, uh, <laughs> it's just weird shit. So it was just, like, um, coming out here, it was, like, for me, it was, like, how can I turn my savage up while still being, like, him somewhere else? Like, can you be him somewhere else? And at college. Yeah, and at your hometown. Like, that's going to really tell, like, if you really got, you know, really got the motion like that, like, really to be on the rise like that. So I'm like, what better to do it than another place that's like L.A., except with just even faster pace and more black people, more people to look like you. Like, you can do it anywhere. You do it out there in Atlanta. So that's what led me to. And Atlanta's just like a turn city. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, just lit. I tell people I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> but I'm You're a what Pioneer's it is. boy. <laughs> I'm from the country. Like, wow. I was not out in Atlanta, like, my high school year, like, so this is really new to me. You were saying that too, like, when we was talking, you were saying, like, uh, like, this is the most, like, exploring, like, you had data, like, the Atlanta area. Cause, like, yeah. we're really in the, in the set. Like, we're actually, like, in the, in the city, like, we stay in the city, our school in the city, like, so we be, we explore a lot. But, like, that's how I know I'm really from the city now, though, cause I know how to get around without my GPS. So oh, I'm really, like, I still use my GPS. Like, I, like, to go to school. I don't know. No, That's but I'm saying like, highway, no, bro. no, but I'm like, even to go to like Planet Fitness, like I don't even like need to use this. Bro, that that's, five <laughs> minutes, that's five minutes away. <laughs> that's bro, just like 12 minutes Atlantean. away. No, it's I not. am an Atlantean, technically. No, bro. But um, let's dive into it, man. So what led you to, you know, want to be a digital creator, man, want to be a photographer? Like I said, bro, you one of the most 
youngest but one of the best photographers in the AUC right now. Um, you know, and that's not just coming from me just because I'm the homie, but just in terms of the work that you've done and everybody, you know, recognizing you and you being a part of these clubs and having a lot of work that's out right now. Um, you know, just what led you to, you know, just being like, I want to pick up the camera and really, you know, using this is like to take you far. So I would probably say uh, it was really my granddad, like seeing my granddad um, taking pictures like when I was a kid, like he was always taking pictures, capturing moments like when we're out. Yeah. Me as a kid, me with the family, like he got books full of photos, just straight photos, mm. all the pictures he done took. And he started to get older, so he started to use his camera less. Mm. So it was just one day I was going through the pictures and I just asked him. It was a long shot. I was like, can I have your camera? Mm. He was like, yeah. I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so I t- took the camera, started taking pictures with it. Yeah. Uh, then I started to love just taking pictures. I was trying to take pictures of anything. Like, I'm going in the backyard taking pictures of flowers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard, though. And so I got gifted, like, my first, like, real camera in December, probably mm-hmm. for Christmas, like, uh, my senior year. Yeah. Because the camera I had, like, it was it was cool, but it was, like, kind of older. Mm-hmm. And I started, like, trying to take it serious a little bit in high school, but I was just too young and, like, I wasn't driven enough. In high school To you know Start taking pictures It was like People around me Doing it And I wanted to do it But I was Like BSing with it Was it like uh, So in high school Is when you like Found your love For taking pictures But you weren't really Committed to taking I, pictures I wasn't committed You at just all. liked the, You just Liked the pictures I did, Yeah I just liked Having a camera Being this, Oh he got a camera He can do it So was your first Real shoot In like high school Or when you like in that transition period to coming to Morehouse or like once it like got to Morehouse and you started seeing how like other photographers here already had the motion like learning from them. So was your first real shoot like here? What you mean by real shoot? Like like one where you could consider like I got paid to come take pictures for like somebody inquired to take pictures. Oh nah. It was in high school. High school. Oh so okay. I wasn't like too unserious, but like I definitely didn't take it as serious as I do now. Okay. I was what was my first gig? I probably shot, I shot a Sweet 16. That was my first like real gig. Mm. I paid like $100. Did they like, what was the feedback to it? They, they thought it was great. I didn't think I did that well. Yeah. But I have a problem with that. Like when I shoot, I be shooting and looking, I be like, dang, like this could have been better. Like you be too critical of your work? Yeah. But that'd be the shit that we'd be like, that's hard. I know. <laughs> that's what I'm like, thinking. I'll, yeah. I'll ask y'all, I'll be thinking like, bro, does this look okay? I be ask y'all, y'all be like, dang, it's hard, bro. Because like, Maybe this is just a me thing when it comes to like pictures, but I I kind of like like raw like authenticity. Like I kind of like the pictures before the edits hit. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes just having that like raw visual, it just it just adds like a like a more pureness to it. Like I don't know, but the edits be hard too though. And yeah, and some people just be over editing. You know what I mean? Yeah, that joint that's not good. Talk about the flaws in you know like digital creation and like photography and videography. Like what are some flaws? Um, that like maybe that you see in like a lot of other photographers or like even in yourself, like a flaw that you may have had when you were first, you know, starting out? Ooh, first, like for me, it was like the use of light. Like I had like no knowledge of like the way light flows, how to like make the light reflect on your subject, like mm-hmm. stuff like that. That's like just young photographer stuff. But I got a mentor. She taught me a little bit about that. I feel like a big flaw like that a lot of people do have though is like over editing. Like I was just mm. saying that like they try to put too much on their pictures. What what makes a picture like an over edit though? Is it like too much lighting? Mm, I would say like too colorful. Like some people like just add so much like color effects that it doesn't even the picture doesn't even really look realistic no more. Mm. Have you done that before? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I yeah, I definitely done that. I done did that. I done took pictures that were like too dark, and I felt like I ain't know what to do. I took them. I got paid for them, but they was just. Too That's dark. what I say that they, but the feedback was like these are hard. Yeah, bro. That's insane. I actually, but now you look back at it, you'd be like, I just like lowballed you. Yeah, I, I look <laughs> back at some of my work, I'd be like, bro, this is trash. Damn. So like. Do you remember? But it's just growing, my fault. Nah, you good. But do you remember, or do you have a favorite 
shoot that you've done or like just like a day where it was just like you was back there at the camera it's just like at least from your first like your first time Wait, like do you have a favorite do you have a favorite shoot from the high school era how yeah i was gonna say do you have a favorite shoot from high school that you did Ooh. What did I shoot at? Uh, that was probably like your best one. It was like, yeah, like you could really go far with this. Or like, which is everybody's give you recognition. Like, bro, this is, this is like, it's hard. It was some baseball pictures. Mm, sports. Yeah, I was senior year. I was on a baseball team. <laughs> Tell the real story about <laughs> if you were really on the baseball team or were you just a member of the team? Yeah, guys, I was like the starting shortstop at Heritage High School. Cap. I batted like not to start. <laughs> 750. This nigga told me he was on the bench. The season, bro. This nigga told me he was the last dude on the bench. And on senior <laughs> night, <laughs> on senior night, he was the one that they would put in to start and they was clapping for him. He got uh, struck out. That's what he <laughs> bro, senior night. Look, guys, uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. I did not used to play when we, when we had games. Like, I did not play <laughs> game at all. Senior night. They had to play all the seniors. I was so mad when he put me in the game. I did not want to play. I got up there to, to bat, bro, threw the ball. I swung and struck out, and it skint my finger too. It was just a lose lose twin. I was I was embarrassed. Um, that was a <laughs> that was an embarrassing moment. I used to get joned. Like I had a friend who knew that I didn't play. So after the games. She would come come up to me and be like, "Great game, Norman." I'm like, "Okay, okay, like that's not cool." <laughs> but I used to be I used to be him in, in baseball, and like with hair, I played basketball heritage my my freshman year. But I was I had I had a little incident with the coach. What happened with the coach, bro? <laughs> bro, I was a hot head. So look, I had earned my little starting spot. I guess I did over like over like what? ninth grade year. I, I earned it uh, mid season. So then we made it to the playoffs. His first rounds. So I start the game. Then twenty seconds in, bro pulls me. He's like, "They gonna pick at you. I don't. I don't know if I want to play this game." <laughs> I'm like, "All right, bro. All right." So. What happened? Oh, we end up losing by 30 to Drew at Hills, bro. If anybody knows, like, ninth grade Drew at Hills, they weren't that good, bro. Oh, like, we could have beat them. And we lost by 30. So after that game, I took my jersey off and threw it in the trash can. The coach was telling me, put your jersey back on. They don't tell me what to do. <laughs> and oh, they told me God. after that game, you'll never play for a heritage basketball team again. I thought it was lying. <laughs> I went to I went to tryouts the next year. I was hooping. Twin, my name was not on that list. Yeah, I was like they were serious. <laughs> All right, so you, your best one was the baseball, the baseball pitchers. Yeah, yeah. Like what made it? Like what, why was everybody going crazy over the baseball? The baseball. I mean, those are just my teammates supporting. Like they was oh, really gotcha. messing with the. They was posting them everywhere, and all that. I like that though. But they, it gave you a lot of recognition, like before you came into Morehouse. Or was it yeah. like 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 Atlanta? Or I would right just there? say it was a personal moment for me, but my favorite. Okay, like, yeah. Okay, what are some uh, like what are some obstacles you probably had to face? Like, you know, being a photographer, and um, you know, maybe not getting the love from like people that you might have looked up to, or people that were like around your age that be taking pictures as well. Like, what is some like uh, some obstacles that you had to face or some things that made you like even question being a photographer or like even doing anything involves like showing your creativity? I would definitely say like the comparing yourself to others. Like that's a comparison is like- Yes, Thief of Joy. The Thief of Joy. Mm -hmm. So like I had a, tro a problem, I would say, just comparing myself to other people and like their work. And I would be wondering, like, why why does my stuff not look like this? Like, it would be people who started, like, way after me. Mm -hmm. And I would be looking at their work, and their work would be better. In my opinion, my their work would be better than mine. So yeah. I would be questioning myself, like, why have I not progressed as much as they have? But I would say that's just, like, a, a work ethic thing. Like, mm -hmm. if you wanted your, your work to look a certain way, 
you gonna figure out how to do that regardless. Yeah. And I think that's uh you know, that's something good. I think the comparison that's something I also had to learn as well, like comparison being a thief of joy. Especially going to, you know, like going to a place like Morehouse where everybody kinda has motion in a sense, or we think everybody has motion in a sense. So, you know, comparison, you know, when you're essentially competing with the best, you know, these are the next, you know, wealthy black men, CEO, business owners in the world. So, you know, you you waking up every day trying to compete with them. They might be in the same craft that you in and like you probably have more experience or then done more, but they just Taking off faster that's than what you, I'm you, saying. And, you, and taking off faster than you and just comparing. Um, so I definitely say that's that's something that's like can just come easy with everybody, but you kind of gotta just lock in and focus on like your race and go at go at your pace because everybody journey different. Exactly, I think that's something that uh, also just being in college and like just seeing everything. I think that's something I learned as well. Like everybody's journey is different, so he may be taking off or, or he or she may be taking off now in the craft, and then they just stop being hot, and then you get hot in a year later, and then like you just never you stop. Up. Yeah. So it just it it's a hard thing to do, but I think you know just understand like everybody's journey is different. Um, it'll definitely take you far. Now, is there a situation that you may have had like being a photographer, like you know in the AC or like in the Atlanta area? Like, is there ever a situation where um, people wasn't really messing with you, or like people was turning you down to like take pictures, or you know just dubbing you, like not thinking that you was you was hard? Yeah, I would say I got this one story. Um, I had um tagged along for my friend's shoot. I, I think it was a little campaign shoot. Um, and he was a part of this little group that uh they're like a little a little production team. Like mm-hmm. they produce stuff. And he was like, "Yeah, like I can bring you on. You can be an intern and work with us, come to our shoots and stuff." So I went. I like shot some like behind the scenes for his shoot. Mm-hmm. Did a little like modeling. Then I helped them with all their shoots for the rest of that day. They added me to like their little group chat and everything. Like yeah. I thought they was messing with me. Yeah. But then like a couple of days later, like bro called me. He like, bro, like you gotta make a business decision. Like, I don't know, like if you should like be in here right now. Like, I think you should just focus on like working on yourself and like building your own name, like mm-hmm. building your own brand. Yeah. And for me, it was just like, damn. But I was like, all right. But now, like, I would say that that made me have, like, be more driven. Yeah. Because now it's like, I want to turn up. Now I got my own my own group. Yeah. FDS. FDS. Shout out FDS. First, First Degree Studios. Yeah. I'm not the founder. I'm head of photography. Shout out Kamir Oni, mm-hmm. Leah Tim, Eboard. Yeah. If you're anywhere in the AUC, bro, you, like, wanted to get, like, modeling and stuff. Because, like, <clears throat> I'm an FDS. And, like. They just put me at FDS because they like I, somehow I always be taking pictures, but I'm not a model. But I always be like in pictures, or like be having the hardest photos. So they asked me like, "You want to be a part of FDS?" I'm like, "Yeah." And then I didn't did like like one or two photo shoots with FDS. I did a, a suit photo shoot, which was hard. That only took pictures. Of shout out only. But I like I did a suit one. Now I did two. I did one. We did Kamir's uh, brand drop. Yeah. Overlooked. Oh yeah, Overlook. That yeah, was a fire overlooked. shoot. That was that was hey, what we did last shout year. Shout out Kamir. Yeah. Shout out Kamir, for sure. Shout but that was when we did last year. We had on the custom shirts that everybody was asking me too, like, where you get that shirt from? Shacking, yeah. Shacking, ooh, Shacking, Shaq and Kobe. Yeah, Shaq, no, 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 it was, no, Shaq, it was Kobe Shaq and Powell. Powell. Yeah, Kobe and Powell. Kobe and Powell. That's what I mean. Kobe and Powell. Shaq and then you had the penny. You had the penny and Shaq. Yeah, you penny and Shaq. Yeah, that, that was hard. hard. But uh, yeah, did did now being in that situation, like you know, people like were dubbing you and stuff like that. Um, is there a moment after that, or scratch that? What's your favorite? Uh, piece of work that you did here in the AUC that blew up and that really like made you see like yeah people are really rocking with me here as a photographer I got two okay so my first one would be like Founders Day you know you know all the spellman I just come fly everybody want pictures Founders Day yeah and I'm a youngin, so I'm on Instagram. 1181 or what? 1881 for a shoot. 1881 for a shoot. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I had a couple people that tapped in with me, like wanted pictures and stuff. But it was just one picture that I took of my homegirls. Mm-hmm. It was Elise, Addison, Avery. Samaya, right? Samaya, Kayla. Am I forgetting anybody? Yeah. Nineteen oh eight, Tiana. Oh, and yeah, Tiana, Tiana. and uh, they were like by the stairs. They were uh, posing, 
and that was a that was a nice picture. It was all over Pinterest, like Instagram, HBCU made their, Buzz, yeah, HBCU Buzz. I was like, whoa, yeah. like they were messing with my work. Yeah, it was a shock. What's the other one? The other one is when I started getting hired for like the on campus Target events. Mm-hmm. So whenever like the Target scholars would have an event or it would be something Target on the on the yard, the yard. Yeah, we the yard, bro. Our shit is cemetery, but it's a yard. <laughs> it's a yard. It's a yard. But yeah. Uh, they would come uh, get me to photograph all the events. And that was when, like, they started paying, like, they started paying. Good. You, was, you was having paid. They was, they was up and low. <laughs> they was, was yeah, they low. was up and low. <laughs> <laughs> they up low. So that definitely, like, helped my confidence just being able to work with, like, Target. Do you have a bad shoot story? Ooh. Like we was at a shoot You was just like bro This is the worst shoot of my life Or just like an incident That might have happened at a shoot I got a funny story What happened? <laughs> I was at a shoot I was setting up Like y'all You know how you got the backdrop mm-hmm. I was up there on the little ladder I'm like taking the backdrop down Bar Bow that Embarrassing Doink me right in the head It's like 30 people in the studio <laughs> I'm just sitting here. I get, I get bumped like, doom. I'm like, damn. You're like, Norman, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> you good, bro? You good, bro? <laughs> bro, had yeah, bro, that, that wasn't nothing. You know that shit. <laughs> 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 like, that ain't nothing. <laughs> what? My bro? head was hurting so bad, Swing. Wow. You ever had like a, like a bad, like, photo that you like might have gave to somebody? It was yeah, like, bro. like for like they like really, like I'm talking about like you edited everything, but it was just still trash. Yeah, the I photographers really so. be doing that, bro. Cause I mean, you okay? Cause like I know like if I take pictures, and I'll ask like, I'll ask for, y'all ask for the file, but it still be edited though. Yeah, but, but it, you have to send that cause like I bought it. Yeah, that's like if if somebody pays me to take pictures, and the pictures are terrible. I'm going to do my best to edit them <laughs> and still get them to you because it's paid work. Like, I have to get it to you, bro. How many pictures can you take? Like, do cameras just get set up like that? You got an SD card. And it just goes off the... And it's what? Wow. Common sense. Yeah, the SD card. Once the SD card get full, you just out. But how many shots I take a shoot? I'll probably take, like... I like to have a lot of pictures. That's probably what I'm like saying. 150 to 200. And you just go through all of them? yeah. I probably give out probably like a hundred to hundred fifty. That's a lot though. When you really think about it, but they're not all edited. I edit probably like twenty, thirty, and then give out the rest. I think you should because now that I'm really thinking about it. I think you should like describe like for people like that don't know what the actual process is like in terms of editing, and like that it is a really tedious process. Because I know for people like me, like. I like a person. I'm a person that likes a quick turnaround. So like, if I take pictures, I'm a one and probably not the next day because I'm realistic. But I mean, like the next like two to three days. Yeah. So it just I, depends. Like, what's the process like? Because I know it's like a tedious process for one to have dope work. I know. I know some photographers who can get the pictures, get you back same day pictures. But that's not like what I do. Yeah. Uh, editing probably takes the longest amount of time. Like, you gotta look at the pictures. You gotta. Mm, see what type what type of editing style that you want. You have to erase like marks, smoothing the skin, mm-hmm. and color grade, and let alone like you got to do some <clears throat> Photoshop work. Like that's some tedious work. Like I would say it probably takes like like two to three days regularly for Damn, me. Damn, for real? Yeah, unless like it's just like something quick. I won't need to edit it. Like I get it. I can get it back like in a day. But like I'm gonna t- usually take my time. Yeah, like unless I have to rush, but I don't like to be rushed. What uh, is there a is there a specific shoot or like thing that you want to shoot in regards to like Morehouse or like the AUC? Is there like something that you want to be at that you taking flicks at that you feel like will like help you know push your name out there as you're still on the rise? I know on HBCU campuses, 
probates are always a thing that you shoot. Mm -hmm. If your pictures are hard, they're going to blow up. Probates, pageants. Um, If I could get into sports photography, I would, but that's not like a priority for Our me sports right are trash. Yeah, they are. They're, they're, they're not worth our pictures. Except for basketball. Yeah, Football basketball don't deserve good. no pictures for going one and nine. You don't need to worry about taking no flicks. Just go ball. <laughs> no flicks need to be t- You don't need to have no Bro I seen this one picture <laughs> I know <laughs> Bro I know You talking about bro Yeah Wait with the guy <laughs> bro, bro I had the binoculars on They was sparking to me. They was sparking With the big bro. shirt popping out Yeah that's And an egg helmet <laughs> the double bar, like the two. If you bro, if you play football, you know what I'm talking about. The egg that, with the, the old Tom Brady with the. That's gross. You're hell. He's like that's a receiver. He was balling though. Yeah, he was balling, but that's that's yeah, not I good. Field trip. That's not good. <laughs> but is there like so you said probates? Are you saying like a a specific like concept that I would shoot? No, just like an important thing that like goes on the HBC campus, like at Morehouse, like you, like you said, probate. Sports. Oh uh, yeah, and then hump, hump, and market Friday. Like, yeah, you gotta shoot those. Like most of my pictures are, or most of my followers and pictures that I have are probably from hump and market. But if like if Morehouse or Spelman or Clark could hire you to like take pictures in specific, it's for something specific that like HBCUs are hosting. Like, what would it be? Like, you would strictly just want to be hired for Market Friday and Hump Wednesday. Homecoming. Yeah. That's what I thought you was gonna say. Homecoming, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I wasn't thinking like of it like that, but like if it was like a specific event, it would just be the homecoming week. Do you have to be a part of like Casa or like one of the clubs to get a credential to shoot, or can you just apply for a credential? Most of the time, like if you get them through the school, yeah, you got to be Casa Maroon Tiger. What's the other one? SGA. Like, can the pod like can the pod get credentials? We can talk if we to blow people up. to get them. Yeah, if we blow up more house. Can we get credentials? Yeah. We should do like a homecoming A homecoming special show. On the come up On the way On the come up Dr. Thomas Homecoming 2024 Dr. Thomas gonna be on my show <laughs> Ask that nigga for some more scholarship money So we got this new segment It's called Five in a Mix And I'm just gonna ask Norm Five questions Five random questions And we are gonna give it He gonna give his opinion on it I'm gonna give my take on it and Yeah So First question LeBron or Michael Jordan? Please give a realistic answer. I know I'm never going to hear the end of this from you, Tyler, but LeBron. Ooh, I say LeBron too, but why LeBron? You just can't, you can't deny it no more. Like, I used to, like, I hate, like, I don't hate LeBron, but I don't like him as a player. He's a good guy. <laughs> why don't I, you like Brad Because I don't like him. He's a crybaby. <laughs> he's a crybaby I don't but he's like he's still that. hard though He's a grown ass crybaby But he's hard though No But LeBron can hoop bro <laughs> He's He can hoop bro I just had to give it to him I seen him the other day Come down and Hit them three threes That, that big yeah. Like his big self Hit them threes Yeah I was like yeah He's the GOAT Yeah he is the GOAT I agree Uh, This is a great question Cause if you know us You know American Deli Is the place to be Ooh what is your order from American Deli? I got to say this to my Atlanta voice. <laughs> you know I'm going to need me a 10-piece honey mouth, extra wet, with <laughs> lemon pepper sprinkles with a peach lemonade. <laughs> Two ranches, please. So, <laughs> I got to go. Can I get the 10-piece, half hot honey, half sweet chili, fries, double ranch peach drink? Ooh, sweet chili gonna roll. Hey, that sweet chili mess my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's hey, sweet chili be toilet. Hey, bro. sweet chili do mess your, mess your stomach up, but that shit good. Yeah, bro. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Fire. Uh, best on the come up artist out of Atlanta right now. You know I gotta say YK Steezy. Steezy. This nigga be playing Steezy all the time, bro. Uh, Lil Tony, Huncho, Huncho on the come up. Yes, yeah, Hunter's on the come up. But he more like buzzing than Lil Tony. And yeah, he these. is, but he's he's on the come up. But he got features though. He came out of nowhere though, so you gotta realize that. Like that, he came like somebody I would say did he say blew that up like a year ago. Somebody did say that on Twitter. They was like, he just came up out of nowhere. That's what I'm saying. So he's still on the come up. 
dream photo shoot you want to do? Ooh. So no, let's make that two questions. Like, first question is, what's like the celebrity? What's this, what's one celebrity that like if you could do like just take pictures of them and like do a shoot with them? Like, who would it be? And then the second question is, like, what's your dream concept shoot you want to do, or like just your dream shoot? So favorite celebrity mm. and then like favorite shoot. I'm gonna give a boy and a girl. For celebrity. For the girl, I would say Megan Thee Stallion. Whoa! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's a great shoot, but like, wow. Bro, because I saw her Halloween work. Like, she was doing like, it was some some modeling that she did. And it was like, she was dressing up like as the <clears throat> as characters. And like, she was killing that shit. Like, sh- it was hard. Bro. I like, <laughs> so I would shoot her. And then for like, on some fashion stuff, Shay. Ooh, that's great. Shay, yeah, Shay's vlog with it. Shay Gilders. Alexander? Yeah, that's great. For my dream photo shoot, though, I want to do, like, like some throwback, like, in the back of a, a old car. You know what I'm talking about? Like, they sit in a car through the window smoking a little cigarette. <laughs> Like it's on like a 70s, 60s type vibe. They in like the convertible. Like Ooh. Whipping it. Is it like film? Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Vintage? Vintage. Very vintage. If if anybody want to work on that, can figure that out for me. Like, let's work. That's hard. You going to have like... It's going to be a couple... Like... Like New Queen York style? Slim. Like New York style? Like cold? Like trench coat? Nah, hat. nah. You know how Queen and Slim is. Oh. Like them... Yeah, some modeling like that. Oh, that's tough. That would be fire. That's what I want to do right now. You got to get like some dark skin. Some uh, dark skin. Yeah, yeah, with a whip, an old ass whip. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what's the, a one goal for you, like in twenty twenty four, in terms of, like, you're just your digital creation, man. Everything for you. Like, what's one goal that you have? I would just say consistency and discipline. Like those two things. Are like two things I feel like are the most important things to me. Like to be successful. Mm. If you're consistent, consistently getting content rolled out, consistently shooting, consistently trying to work on building your craft, you're gonna get better. You're gonna hit big one day. And discipline, like the discipline is everything. So your goal is to build your discipline and stay consistent. Yes. What do you want that to lead to? As far as my future. As far as just you with the camera this uh, this upcoming year. What do you want your consistency, your discipline to lead to? Well, one, I want to like hit big, like get hired to like shoot something like consistently, like something mm-hmm. big, or hired to work for a company, like work for like a studio. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to make steps to opening like maybe like a few studios or like trying to get a studio open for me, like just to have a creative space. Yeah. Um, and then helping first degree, like just bloom. Cause right now I really feel like we're on the come out. Like yeah. the group as a whole, um, a lot of people are inquiring about it. Um, so it, I would just It's also, say, it's a lot of great digital creators in FDS. Um, you know, I do like videography, photography, just everything. Like it's a lot of great creators that I met. Um, that are really hard at FDS as well. Yeah, so I would just say building that up <clears throat> and just making a name for myself, uh, getting my trademark out, and just people to like to know who I am. I might drop a little clothing line twenty twenty four. Not the norm on the way. Ooh, that's tough. That's tough. tough. Now, before we get out of here, man, I feel like we should give them. Some stories about the legends, then. <laughs> if you I'm know, not starting. if you know, you know that me and Norm, we do a lot at the house, man. Do a lot at the house. A lot of great nights. A lot of great nights at the legends, then, man. A lot of great kickbacks. A lot of great parties. A lot of great women. Uh, oh. <laughs> a lot of great vibes. A lot of great, great ones. A lot of great stories. So, what would you say is like <laughs> our greatest night at the legends, then, bro? Homecoming? Maybe homecoming? <sighs> homecoming was insane. 
Homecoming was sick. Homecoming was first of all, just a little background. So AUC, like our the way our homecoming is set up is like they're back to back, they're back to back weeks. So you have Morris Brown who kicks off pretty much October, you know, and they just got their accreditation back. So they kick off October. Clark. Clark. Clark Atlanta. And then Clark homecoming is the next week, which really kicks off Morehouse and Spelman yeah, homecoming does. anyway, because like Clark is like our cousin. So they homecoming be the week before. And then that just, that really is what kicks off homecoming. And then you got Spellhouse homecoming, which is just another week of bunk, another week of viral activities, another week of. Bro, how many people do we have in the house? Like, homecoming? First of all, backstory two, the week before, we had already like blurred out like, bro, we're not doing anything for two weeks. <laughs> so I was already like in the set like, bro, I'm not, no class, nothing, like, nah, whatever. Yeah, like, that was, it was sick. Yeah, like, it was, that was just the longest <laughs> I, two weeks of my life, bro. Like, we are just, we're, 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 we're hotheads. Like, homecoming was two weeks for like, straight two weeks. Like, I was getting, got a hair t- haircut back to back weeks. Like, hair, got my hair done. Yeah. Like, hair, stitch like, braids. Outside, like, it was no, no, none of that was going on. So, prior to Spellhouse homecoming, we had a lot of LA people come down for Clark homecoming because they start just doing this shit every year. Like, I don't know why. So, dummy LA people come from home to go to Clark homecoming. And so, we was already doing like some like festivities. Like, we was going out, but we was really like just trying to figure out, like, really trying to get prepared for Spellhouse homecoming. But we were still going out for the Clark stuff. So, it was like one of them, I think it was after Clark homecoming concert. What the kickback? The first one, the one I had. Yeah, was that they homecoming concert? I think it was. It was there. Yeah, it was after they homecoming. Concert. Yeah, so after Clark homecoming concert, we didn't go to their homecoming concert. We was in the house, probably playing two K or something. And then uh, if you know, if you know it though, I'd be smacking on bro, the two K. I'd be shit, hey hey look. <sighs> make sure you put this put this in the pot. I'd be whooping Josh in two K. I'd be striking him for like fifty a day. How? I be striking him right, for like bro. fifty a day. Can you please like, tell? Guy, can you please tell everybody? Sucks. Can you please tell everybody that you just that you this just got hit sucks. for fifty? You just got hit for fifty. You just <laughs> got hit, for, bro. The two K games are like they're they're like they're very not intense. 50, like we play don't that every 50, 50. day. I said they're very oh, okay. intense. Yeah, don't say fifty fifty. All right, not I took fifty dollars from this nigga the other day though, so it doesn't even matter. He took fifty. Ask how much I took. You for took fifty. I took. He was saying how he was going. Wait, He was saying how he was going to keep my money. He was saying how he was going to keep my money. He was saying how he's going to keep my money. He does not keep my money. The money came right back to me, and I went. I bought me an American. Wait, guys, let me tell y'all what he makes me do. Look, so Josh plays with the Cleveland Cavaliers. That's a good squad to play with. That's a that's a great squad to play with. It's a great. It's a great squad to play on 2K. No, exactly. no. Mm, not my <laughs> exactly. That's a great squad to play on 2K. And I was playing with him, playing with the Suns. I was beating him with the Suns, so he made me change teams. Until, he wouldn't bet me until I changed teams. That's not true. So I changed teams. I beat him with another team. He keep making me change teams, and he get to play with the same team over and over again. Like, bro, how is that fair? It's not. I take. I it's take not. his money, bro. Play me for money. It doesn't matter. Play me for bro. Money we can not. play, bro. I don't turn play down no. Fa- I don't turn down no phase when it comes to with when it Mavericks. comes to two K. I just I just took money with you playing for the All Mavericks. Right, come on. All right, bro. All right, man. See, talking about bro. And I'm gonna take his money again. I'm gonna put this in the pod too. I'm gonna send him a clip. <laughs> put it in the pocket. But yeah, so the legends did, man. We uh, Clark come coming. My home girl, home girl Bree had called had called me. She from LA too, and she was like, um. We're looking for plots. We're looking for plots. I guess it was like parties and stuff going on. And like, you know, we wasn't really going to the parties like that, but we was still like lit or whatever. Yeah. So and it was like, uh, it was like, Josh, where you at? Like, can we have some at your house? Like, because I, I low key wanted to have some at the house, but I was like, I don't know. So they was like, she was like, can we have something at your house? I'm like, yeah, like whatever. Y'all can have some at my house. So we started cleaning up, whatever. And then like 11, just a mob of people just came into the house. Like, just like turn like all my LA people I ain't seen like they just all coming through to the crib like they were just having a great night and they shooting dice in my kitchen like t- twerking by the table bro yeah I was I was like whoa bro shooting dice like I'm walking around the house somebody standing on the chair shaking their <laughs> ass bro <laughs> they in the kitchen have my skeletes here talk about no I hit you for 50. I hit you for 50. <laughs> they arguing about dice. I'm like, Shout bro, out third. Am I finna get popped in my crib? <laughs> I was like, whoa. 
<laughs> Shout out third. Shout out third, man. Shout out all the homies. But we had that. That was rolling. Great night. And then the next day. Nah, it was nah, it was the next day. Was it next, next day? That, no, nah, it was like that weekend. Yeah. Literally like three days after. Oh yeah. Norm was like, we having a kickback at the house, homecoming kickoff. What? How was rolling? It was how many people? It was probably like it was good vibe. It was, it was a good lot vibe. Of house was rolling. Like what, like 150? No. No. Less? Homecoming. Homecoming, homecoming was rolling. Homecoming. But yours rolling too. Yeah, it was a lot of people. So Norm had a little KB. He rolled. It was sick. And then homecoming after our concert. We had a joint. We week. had a function and it was rolling. It was crazy. It was rolling. Bro thought the floor was finna cave in. Yeah, I, hey, I'm in the house. <laughs> I go to Josh. I'm like, bro, bro, like our floor is finna cave in. Our floor is finna cave in. Like, we, need to, <laughs> we need to kick I'm you. I'm loaded out, ski. Bro. I was shaking in my boots. I'm loaded ski. Of course. Yeah, hey, he be loaded. <laughs> hey, hey, Josh be wet up. He be toe up, bro. I'm loaded ski. I'm vibing. That was a great night. Yeah. But they always say like, First of all, this is really what I wanted to say. If you come to the Legends Den and you one of the homies or you just like a dude that just get an invite and you come and you don't like leave mingle. with some numbers or like or mingle with you're them. a loser. Like, <laughs> dude, what are you doing? The ratio is always... <laughs> what? He said the, ratio, a loser. the ratio is always... Because you know, you know me, I like, you know... You know it's gonna be great ones. It's Lob City. Yeah, it's it's Creeper's it's Lob, Lob City. City. Like it's gonna be great ones at the house. So like, if you're looking for somebody, like, Legend. I'm just a facilitator. I just I just be chilling. I just you know, <laughs> it's like Steve Nash. Like I just be out there Pass- just passing the ball. Like yeah, like yeah, just, PC yeah, Tommy. <laughs> I just be chilling. Like I'm Don Juan. Like I just be kicking it. It was like if you come to the Legends, then bro, like. You just like I don't know Like you ain't talking to nobody I mean nobody knew Like you're not a steez You're not Like no way Not even saying like You gotta just like Take her home But like Bro talk to Just talk Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> You don't make don't no friends Like corner. you're a loser Like yeah corner. Like if you ever came to Legends And still in the corner Like you're never coming back Yeah don't Don't come back Yeah actually. like you can never Come back to the house <laughs> If you ever do that But Before we get out of here man Just You know What's What's some things That you're looking forward to man Just as you stay on your Come up and on your rise To just being a digital creator, man, and being one of the most well-known, you know, photographers in the AUC, bro. Just what's next for you, man? And what are you excited about going into the new year? Really, I'm excited for the summer. I want to try like a little start, like a HBCU tour. Okay. Of just with me going to college campuses, like, just flicking up, flicking up, mm-hmm. and dropping dumps, FAMU, Howard, mm-hmm. Tuskegee. All of that. I want to start a series like that. Ooh, that's tough. That would be crazy. HBCU guru just going on tours, homecoming. That would be crazy. And just being that dude that'd be like, hey, I'm from, can I take your picture? Viral. On TikTok, yeah. all that. Very viral. And like I said, like my FDS stuff, of course. Um, I know I want to intern. Like I'm still a student. Yeah. So I got like student goals. I want to probably like intern in New York. I wouldn't study a bar, bro. That's just too, too far. Long. That's yeah, it's too long. It's yeah. too far. Um, and then like just building new clientele, um, finding new people to work with, maybe a few celebrities, like just like hitting big, bro. Yeah, getting tapped in. Yeah, bro. Before we close, man, before we close, do you have a question for me, bro? Any question for me, bro? Do you have a question for me, man, that you feel like I should share with the world? I think you should tell the people about your uh, little most recent breakthrough with Cheetah. Yeah. So for you guys that don't know, uh, I am an aspiring NFL agent, but I'm currently um, an NIL agent and I own my own sports entertainment agency called Cohesive Group. And so, um, you know, being I just turned 20 uh, like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. So um, being young and being a Agent in this NIL space and, you know, the world now where college athletes can get, high school and college athletes can get paid um, from uh, name, image, and likeness deals and, like, brand collaboration and stuff like that. Um, I take it upon myself to, like, want to jump into that craft, being a former athlete and, you know, just wanting to see 
um, college athletes succeed and create generational wealth. Um, I, do- I dove into that lane. And so, um, as you guys may know, the squabble, the dance, the squabble, you know, Lev, do it, Soak City, all of that. Lev, do it, right. Yeah. <laughs> that started. <laughs> so, um, the dance, the squabble that everybody's been doing all over the world, you know, LeBron, Travis Kelsey, Moise Keen, um, just everybody all over TikTok, the NFL, the NBA, they're all doing this dance. And um, that started from inner city Los Angeles. So that dance has been around for like over a decade. Started inner city Dorsey High School where I went to high school. And so, um, you know, one of the guys, or not one of the guys, the guy who is the creator of the dance has, um, you know, finally, you know, he, the OG creator is from Los Angeles. So he's from the inner city and the dance just got put in uh, Madden, got put in EA Madden. Um, and it was just going all around. And so everybody from inner city Los Angeles is like, bro, like my guy Cheetah, my guy Cheetah like made this dance. Like, let's give him the props, give him the credit, you know, whatever, whatever. So, um, you know, my dad and I thought it was a great idea for me to like reach out to, to Cheetah because I knew him. You know, like I said, I went to the high school he went to. Um, and, you know, he just was like a big brother mentor to me. Like I was, I was playing football in high school and stuff like that. So he was like, you know, is anybody helping this dude like get recognition for, you know, the dance stuff like that? And I'm like, no. And so we thought it would be a great idea for like, you know, have him to possibly trust me and representing him and like, you know, creating, you know, opportunities for him. And so um, he allowed me to, you know, be like his representative and him be like one of my first big signings. And I would say like October, you know, I signed him to the brand, to the company. And long story short, man, he got on ESPN and had a segment um, on ESPN, you know, coming out as the creator that, you know, went viral, went global. And since then, I've just been working on, you know, just trying to get him brand collaboration deals, opportunities, stuff like that. And so just still learning, but it's been a great process and it's been a great journey so far. So that's kind of my... My 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 break. Baby, I like the way you move. <laughs> way you do it, you do it. That's <laughs> what? <laughs> wow, well, but man, my boy, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. The relaunch Every episode. Sh- Watch, skill of score. <laughs> appreciate you coming on the show, bro.